House Bill 334, as you know, was signed into law in 2012. Um, that has had a very positive effect. And it's enabled us to, law enforcement, to um, get a lot of these drugs off the streets, uh, take them out of um, gas stations and other places that are selling them. When we passed the bill, when the legislature passed the bill, we fully expected the drug dealers, and that's what they really are, uh, drug dealers, uh, the chemists and the people who are making all the money from these drugs, to continue to constantly change the formulation. Um, we are seeing now uh, several new new things. Uh, I did not do very well in chemistry in high school. My wife did much better, uh, future wife. But, um, so I struggle with this, but let me give you a couple of them. Uh, PB22 and 5FPB22 are just two of them. Uh, we're seeing these now in BCI's crime lab. Uh, they are being self-reported by people who are going to emergency rooms. Um, and as you know, many times people do not know what they're taking. Uh, apparently in some cases they do. And they are reporting, self-reporting this in emergency rooms. Currently under Ohio law, uh, they, uh, lawyers in my office tell me, they are not illegal. And we expect uh, on the horizon uh, from the federal officials, DEA, and others who have seen it in other states that this is just the beginning. Uh, these two products that I just talked about are synthetic marijuana. Uh, we expect others to be coming on as well. One of those which I named in, in the letter that I sent to you uh, late, late last week. My commitment to you uh, is that we, from now on, beginning actually last Friday, uh, will proactively notify you when we are seeing this. Uh, we will do it in the form of a letter. Uh, we will back that letter up uh, with uh, documentation, and evidence, and whatever this board needs. We see it uh, as it's reported by hospitals many times. Uh, local law enforcement will report it to us. Coroner's officers will report it to us. Uh, sheriffs, prosecutors. In addition to that, our BCI uh, lab, when they get these in and test them uh, and find that there is a product that we believe is extremely dangerous, uh, but it is not covered by current Ohio law. As you are well aware, uh, you have authority under Ohio Revised Code 37-1941 to list these as prohibitive drugs. We would ask you to begin to exercise that authority that you have. Uh, our commitment to you is that we will provide you with whatever information uh, you deem appropriate, whatever information that uh, we believe and you believe the law requires us to provide to you. As you know, I won't go through 37, 1944, uh, but it does give you the authority, which is frankly similar to authority, uh, at least to some extent, that the DEA has on the federal level, to add, to move around, to change from one schedule to another. Uh, it is only uh, by using this authority that we are going to be able to keep up with these drugs. 
There is simply no way for the legislation to constantly monitor this and to go back every sometimes month or two months and change the law. It makes no sense to do it. The uh, federal government has had this problem for some time. That's why a number of years ago, uh, the law at the federal level uh, gave DEA the authority to do that, and that has been upheld at the federal at the federal level. So we would we would ask you to do that. This is a uh, plague, frankly, uh, that is threatening our communities. Um, we have in the Attorney General's office been very proactive in this. And again, I want to emphasize this is a joint effort. Uh, 